Hello everyone and welcome to another Marvel Crisis Protocol unboxing. We have a bevy of boxes to unbox for you today. One of which I'm surprised is actually like the double thickness size. I'm not sure why that one is, but we'll be unboxing CP37, The Amazing Spider-Man and Black Cat, CP50, Mysterio and Carnage, and CP58, Lizard and Craven. I was a fan of the Spider-Man cartoon in the 90s, so I'm very familiar with all these people, well, more or less turning up fairly regularly so I was looking forward to these releases. They were a little bit delayed in the UK but we're finally here. We've got a lot to get through so I just want to get started although I will give you a quick spoiler for something coming in the future at some point. I was able to track down the Ultimate Encounter uh, Magneto cards. Here we are here so we will be seeing this at some point in the future. It's uh, similar to like the Ultron one, the Hulk one etc against a cosmic threat so we'll be seeing Magneto as a cosmic threat at some point in the future but for now we're going to go in order and start with CP37. So we have our new version of Peter Parker and Black Cat, his Catwoman equivalent. And I think for the most part, people still like the core box Spider-Man. I don't. I don't like the model, and I don't really like its stats. I'm aware that from a gameplay perspective, him being able to yank people off of objectives and whatnot is uh, considered very, very powerful. But I just find him kind of boring, and I don't think he's worth four threat, personally. This Spider-Man though is Peter Parker at his prime, so he's more powerful, he's more costly, and as far as the Black Cat miniature goes, um, I think it might be in the running for the worst pose they've ever done, personally, and I'll definitely be trying, actually we'll see in a second if it's going to be possible to position her right way up. This is Assembling Ultimate Spider-Man, I think there's a lot of opportunities for customization with him, because you can still do him swinging on the, the girder. You don't need to do the lower explosion. Well, if you flanned that off, you wouldn't have to. Just because if you didn't want to have like yet another base with a tactical explosion on it. Or if you hung the satellite disc on something else, you wouldn't need to use the girder at all. So I think there is a lot of room for customization. And clearly very simple instructions, which is good as well. Now, Black Cat, let's see. If I ever call her Catwoman by mistake, I apologize in advance. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so there's just a slot on her foot that you can trim down. You could absolutely face her the right way up, which is what I'll be doing, because this looks like her spine is broken in two places. Very bad pose. I don't know what they were thinking with that. Either way, assembly instructions look fine. Well, yeah, I mean, attaching web to girder. That's fine. Hopefully her whip isn't flimsy. Oh, I can see the Spider-Man web in here. That looks... Well, he's not being uh, held up by it, I suppose, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, that's uh, that's like half the thickness of Daredevil's whip. There it is. There, that is that is thin. So you want like if you didn't want to model him on the girder, that might actually prove a problem because that's not going to be a solid anchor point at all. You'd have to do something else. Interesting though. Oh, I didn't realize it said Daily Bugle on it. It wasn't really obvious from the. Oh, because it's facing the other way, that's why. You'd only see it if you were looking at it from the side. Huh. Tiny bit of sprue for Black Cat. Her whip, yeah, that's fine. And again, if you trim down the leg, you could absolutely position her the right way up. Which would look better by a million percent in my opinion. But that's just me. Protective cardboard. And then the important stuff. The cards. I don't think these two come with a mission. We've got some Web Warrior affiliation. Oh yeah, that's the other thing about this Spider-Man. He can also lead the Web Warriors, so he has his own leadership bonus. Slow tokens and some days tokens just because they want to fill out a card. Tactics cards. The Cat and the Spider. Spider Tracker. And Aunt May's Wheat Cakes. Nice. I like that one, that one. If Peter Parker is within two of an ally Black Cat, they both spend one. Throw off Black Cat. You don't... Uh, hang on. You don't suffer collision damage, yes. After it's dissolved, you can immediately interact with any number of objective tokens without spending power. Hmm. It's an aerial yoink. Nice. Spider Tracker in uh, Green Goblin's bag. A reactive for Web Warriors only. After an enemy character ends a move action within four of Web Warriors' character, they spend two. This character can advance small. Okay, so it's a small move against the target. Ant May's Wheat Cakes with Spider Pig. Well, I don't remember his actual name. I go to the Simpsons one by default. Any number of Web Warrior characters can spend one to play this card. Characters that spent power 
may remove the slow condition and one damage. It's their version of Second Wind. That's kind of neat. I like that. Those are not wheat cakes. Those are pancakes. Eh, I'm, I'm sure that's fine. And so finally, their cards. Let's just quickly go over Black Cat first, because remember, at least she's not super special. Three threat with five health is pretty good. Three, three, three defense. Pure physical damage, though. Her zero cost is four. It has pierce on it on wilds. Troublemaker, two power, six damage, three range. If this would deal one or more damage, it deals one damage instead. Oh. After this attack is resolved, it gives a stagger condition, and you, if you get a wild, you can uh, move small. Ooh, well, I mean, I think this is the first character since Shuri to have an attack like this. It's interesting. It almost guarantees the one damage. The stagger is what you're wanting, and it guarantees the stagger as long as it... Oh, it doesn't even need to do damage, in fact. It's just a way to get a stagger on people to take away their actions, which is pretty good. Interesting way to do it. She has a grappling hook, move within two of its current position for two. Choose an enemy character with this one for three power, she can steal an asset from them. Although you're not allowed to hold more than the crisis would allow normally. Characters cannot modify attack dice when attacking this character. It's pretty good. And she has stealth. Okay. She stay oh she has long movement as well, I don't think I covered that. She stays five health on her wounded side. And it looks like everything else remains the same as well. Felicia Hardy. I'd actually forgotten her real name. <laughs> he says it enough in the cartoon you'd think I'd remember, but no. Okay. For a three threat, that, that seems perfectly fine. But five threat characters. There's, a, there's quite a big swing on five threat characters. So the amazing Spider-Man. Six health, long move. Four, four, three for defense. And he has um, a better spider sense, if I remember rightly. Spider Strike is his basic for 5 with momentum on uh, Chris and Wild. And then his best one is 5 power though. 8 dice, physical, 2 distance. And he gets a free medium move out of it. If he gets a Wild, you can choose a, uh, a train feature size 2 or less and chuck it 3. Nice. His affiliation bonus once per turn during an allied character's activation, he may pay 1, choose an enemy within 2, and he gains slow. Which matters for some of, uh, is it Gwen's and... Well, if you play all webbed up the tactics card, they would get bonus dice. So I think it's to work in tandem with that. If they already have slow, place them within one. And then remove slow. Hmm. He's got web swing for two, to put him within three. For one, he can do witty banter. When an enemy character within three of his characters is attacking an ally character, you can modify your dice to reroll one of the attack dice. Okay, and then because of Mastered Spider Sense, you can reroll any number of defense or dodge. And it is Wall Crawler, of course, because he's the Wall Crawler. Five threat, though, that's, that's a, a tough tier to be in. Six health, so he stays 12 health in total, six on each side. And I don't think anything on this side changed either. Nope, nope, stays the same defense. His base defense being 4-4-3 is really good, especially when you consider he has full reroll capability. So he is sturdy. He can definitely dish out damage once he has power accumulated. He He's lacking the... Like, being able to move people constantly and just be annoying <laughs> that the other Spider-Man has. But this is a tanky leader Spider-Man, so I think it's okay. I don't think we'll see one like this again until they do superior Spider-Man. If, well... I assume they'll do Superior Spider-Man at some point. Okay, I am, I'm interested in seeing how he does on the table compared to the other one. I'll get this cleaned up and then we'll look at Mysterio and Carnage. So it is time to discover why Mysterio and Carnage have the double thick box. I guess just because they're both fairly large minis. Uh, Venom, Venom. Carnage is definitely on like the hella size base, although it looks like Mysterio is on the normal size base. I don't know, we're about to discover why they're in the larger box. I guess we should just get stuck in, we have a lot to cover. Let's get this open. Well, there is certainly a chunk of sprue, so I guess that's the reason why. We've got our protective cardboard and nothing else in there as well. Where's our assembly instructions? There they are. Now, I did hear from a friend these are overly complicated, or unnecessarily, I believe was the word they used. For Carnage, there's hand options, so you can give him a, like a sickle hand, an extended claw, or you can just give him his classic claws if you want. And he's rooted to the floor by, I think... Yeah, three tendrils. 
which uh, might look like it's flimsy. Again, my friend who's already assembled these said he thought it would be more flimsy than it is. It seems quite sturdy. And then Mysterio. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I see the pointless steps here. This looks awkward and unnecessarily complicated. This, attaching the top of his bracers to the rest of his wrist, why? Like, actually, why, though? This, this is all fine. Attaching the hands and everything else, that's fine. It looks clear enough. Well, maybe not this step. It looks clear enough how you're supposed to assemble the cloud he's standing on. Like his, you know, his mysterious gas. Hmm. But the, yeah, this looks more complicated up here and then it gets easier. That's what it seems like. So let's see what's what's poking through the, the bag. Whose sprue has taken up all this space? Oh, I think it's... Oh, they're tangled. Ah, it's Carnage's tendrils. They're very large and, and bulky more so. I, I like that they have the protective pins though to, to keep it safe, that's good. That is an attention to detail I appreciate to protect the sprue and the sprue quality. And the Mysterio, his cape is huge and massive. Where's the tops of his bracers? There they are. So those goes on to those for some reason. And then you have two options, the big base for Carnage and then the standard four for uh, Mysterio, of course. So it looks like they don't get a mission, but there is a Mysterio specific token and then some, uh, that's the new symbol for Root, isn't it? Because they changed it from just being really to Groot because other people can do them now. Let's get these cards out. Let's see what we have here. They are stuck. There. There will be Carnage, the Grand Illusion, and Carnage rules. So Carnage, there will be Carnage, unaffiliated. You can pay any number of power to play this card. Choose a mini character within three for each power spent. He roots them down. So it's to keep people slowed and stuck. Well, slowed it down, not to be confused with the actual slow status effect. The Grand Illusion, I like that art. That's great. Mysterio may spend four to play this. Until the end of the cleanup phase when enemy character makes an attack, defense or dodge roll while within three of him, it may not add results for crits. And Mysterio changes all of its crit results to skulls instead. Wow. That makes him a very disruptive piece. Carnage rules. That's graffiti. He's graffitiing. He can spend four to play this card. Choose an, an enemy character within four, advance the character small, and then Carnage can make a symbiote tendrils attack on them. Okay, which we can look at in detail in a second. So from what I remember about Carnage's card, he's like a pure glass cannon. Except against physical, I guess, but yeah, his uh, energy and mystic defense are one each. He's four threat, seven health, medium move, so he's sturdy in that regard. Symbiote tendrils, five dice, physical, range three, and does bleed. Maximum carnage isn't here. Oh. Area attacks are are a fallacy in this game, honestly, because you've got your character spread out too much for them to ever be super super good. But either way, five threat, uh, five threat, five power, seven physical area two. It can do rampage to do extra damage if you get a wild and a hit. Sadistic glee. During the next attack action made by this character, his turn add two to his rolls. But after it's resolved, if you rolled any skulls, you suffer damage. Okay. Paint the town red. If you daze or KO a character, you can spend three. After it's resolved, you can move small, remove all damage from yourself, and make a symbiote tendrils attack. So that's why you've got to get him down and don't let him near anyone who's almost dead. So another occurrence of the arch nemesis rule, but this time specifically for Eddie Brock, i.e. Venom. But it works the same way as the Green Goblin with Peter Parker. And then Symbiotic Serial Killer. When this character is attacking, the defending character doesn't add dice to the defense roll for crit results. That's that's really good. He's a very, very powerful 4 threat character. Just a reminder, Daredevil is also 4 threat compared to this guy. He stays on 7 health on his wounded side as well. Good grief. He is really good. You've got to focus him down. But obviously, non-physical attacks just wreck him. But, if you put him near someone who's wounded, he heals to full. I don't think anything is changing on this side, as far as I can tell. 
yeah, he is he is a very interesting four threat character. He has flavor. His role matches his persona. He has very obvious weaknesses, but also a way to fully heal himself. So that's, you've got to get the job done if you go in on him. And Mysterio is a three threat, six health, which is pretty healthy. For, um, only with small though. One physical defense, one energy defense, five mystic defense. So that's why these two are paired together. They're the weirdos with very bizarre one defense for things. He only does mystic, which is good. Four range three for his hypnotic gas. And then curtain call is four, six physical, uh, six mystic dice. Only range two, but it can stagger on wilds. Tricks and traps. An enemy character ends movement within three. You may use a super power roll four dice and they suffer one damage for any crits and wilds. Okay, and then you get a free move small out of it as well. Master of Illusions. Whenever this character rolls dice after the effect is resolved, it gains one power if it rolled at least one blank. So it's like Doctor Strange's one for rolling a shield, etc. Smoke and Mirrors. When an enemy character targets this character with an attack, it may use its mystic defense unless the character attacking is willing to pay two, which is the same as Enchantress's version of the attack. So basically, unless you're willing to pump two power in, he's always rolling five defense. Fair enough. He has stealth built in, and of course, he can fly. Spin him over. He goes down to five health on his wounded side. I don't see anything else changing. I was kind of hoping his illusions would like break or something on the other side. But I guess not. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see any difference. I was just wondering, like, what is the token with his character card on it for? Like, what is it used for? I'm not sure. Did I miss something? Hmm. Maybe I did. Maybe I missed something. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what you need, like, the little Mysterio thing for. Curtain call, maybe? No, because it just does stagger. Hmm, I don't know. I, I, I must have missed something. Alright, well, we'll get this move out of the way anyway, because we still have the Lizard and Craven to look at. So last, but by no means least, the other two villains from Spider-Man's uh, Rogue Gallery. Apex Predator is nice, that's why they're paired together, I guess. Now, for those of you who don't like uh, weird bases, the tactical water on the Lizard, I'm sure, will be a sticking point. This is a very filled box. Like, it's actually... Like, part of the sprue is bulging in this box. It's quite dangerous. In terms of damaging it, I mean, I can't actually see what was causing that either. Weird. Either way. So we have our final for this video, Supreme Judgment. Here's the lizard. Um, gotta attach face to tongue. That's, that's a thing that I had to say just now. Other than that, the water itself, at least it's it's numbered, so that definitely takes away some of the ambiguity that can sometimes happen with their smoke, magic, slime, whatever else that they have characters hanging off of. And you can you don't need to attach the sword ring if you don't want to, by the looks of things. You could just leave that off if you wanted. And Craven is just oh there we go, that's that's more like it, that's as simple as you can get. That I approve of. Danger, do not feed the animals. This is the sign he's jumping off of, which is lovely. Protect the cardboard, we'll get that to one side. Oh, let's do the sprue first, actually. Actually, I, I want to get the sprue out of this bag, because I think the bag is constricting it. Yeah, look at that, look how much damage is on that. So that is Kurt Corner's body and tactical water. The... Oh, that's the rest of it. And that's his upper body and the sewer. And that's his tongue that you have to put inside his head for some reason. Maybe it's an optional step so you don't need to see it. I don't know. There's Craven's card, uh, sprue rather. And then the other bases. And the lizard is on the, the larger base from this set of two as well. Oh, they have some unique looking tokens. Spider-Man in a net. That must be related to Craven. Yeah, they're all re related to Craven. So, what do we have here? We have Sinister Traps. Spider Foes reactive. An allied character may play this card during the first power phase. Choose an objective token 
The first time a character ends movement within two of the objective token roll five dice and they suffer one damage for each hit, crit or wild. Wow, and they're pushed small. That's very nasty considering how important holding your closest objective is in this game. He uses up one of your attack, that doesn't even cost anything. Wow, it's really good. Oh, is that the lizard? Yeah, that's the lizard before he turned into the lizard, you can tell because he's only got one hand. Neogenic Recombinator. Also spider foes only. Two allied spider foe characters within three of each other play the card. One character that played this card may suffer up to three damage to remove it from the other. Hmm. Okay. Monkey Brain is Lizard Home. I don't really like the art on that one, I must say. His eye looks very, very wrongly placed in his head. I know he's turning, but still. Lizard Brain, area 2, zero cost, five physical damage. You can spend three to do it. Eh, he gets a free, uh, well, push, small. It's a way to clear an objective, but three power for five physical. I think he's three threat from what I remember. We'll obviously look in a second. Oh, hey, it's Craven when he dresses up as Spider-Man after he sort of kills Spider-Man, but not really. Fearful Symmetry. Well, Craven the Hunter, when oh, when he kills an enemy Peter Parker, if there's no Peter Parker in your squad, you can play this card. Craven the Hunter transforms into Spider-Man Peter Parker. Oh, that's very that's very um, thematic. I'm not sure about how useful it is. You go to your healthy side. Move all damage tokens, power, special conditions, objective tokens, etc. I wonder, like that would count Amazing Spider-Man as well, right? Because he is Spider- no, he's Amazing Spider-Man Peter Parker. So probably, and it would be the fourth threat one. So that's not as good. But he does become Spider-Man in his part of your squad. He imitates Spider-Man to prove that he can be better at him in the comics. That art doesn't look like the art in the version of the comic I read where he does that though. Plus he has the black suit, not that suit, but... Either way, uh, the Lizard and Craven are both 3 threat. 5 health, medium move, 3-3-3. Three, three, three. Only physical damage with a Kukri strike and a spear thrust. Uh, corner the beast. Choose an enemy character within 3 uh, for 2. Till the end of his next activation, if it advances or climbs, it suffers damage. It's to stop your prey getting away. I like that, it's very thematic. It also loses wall crawler if it has it. Expert tracker for 3. Choose an enemy character. Ally characters roll 1 additional die when attacking them. Okay. This character may re-roll one die in its attack or defense rolls. Getting a very strong, like, uh, Akoye vibe from him. Obviously not the same threat value, but it's kind of similar. Not just because they both have Spear Thrust as well. He stays on 5 health on his wounded side. I don't see anything else changing. That's the thing, like, all the recent releases over the last few months, they've, they've rarely done anything besides HP changing on wounded sides. We need more like fancy shenanigans when people get wounded. I'm so disappointed like Scarlet Witch doesn't start to go crazy on her wounded side. It, it, it would fit so thematically. I don't know. But yeah. It's a little boring to look at when they're just the same on the other side, but that's what it is for Craven. He remains the same as far as I can tell. So finally we have the Lizard who, if I remember rightly, for being a three threat character is actually a pr pretty decent tank for the spider foes. 6 health, medium move, 4, 3, 3 for defense, size 3. He's only doing physical as well. That's a theme with a lot of these releases, actually. Biochemical breakthrough for a 3 cost. Interactive train feature or an enemy character, size 3 or less, you chuck it small. Okay, so that's, that's fine. Thick hide, though, he reduces any damage taken by 1 to a minimum of 1, and he has healing factor 1 and wall crawler. Very kind of like... You know, it's just, he's a brawler with a little bit of tankiness. I don't know, on paper, he might be better than Luke Cage. Maybe, because he's got the healing factor, he does reduce damage in the exact same amount. I think he has the exact same health as well. I guess Luke Cage's advantage is he can uh, take hits for other people at the cost of power. Like, he can jump in and take the shot, whereas the Lizard can't. Um, he d he's got no way to force himself to be the target. He is sturdy, though and on par for the same threat cost. On his wounded side he loses 1 HP, keeps his healing factor, keeps his thick hide, he can still chuck stuff, 
and the best he can hope from his attacks are bleeding slow and a push on his basic if you get a wild and it's the same on both sides as well I like that on both those sides Craven was fine as well I, I didn't mention it but it looked fine it's the same artist I think yeah you can tell you can, you can tell by the style so the lizard I think is a is a much needed just tanky addition to spider foes that's cheap and cheerful as well three threat is fine Craven being able to become Spider-Man if you kill Spider-Man is very thematic, but you know you have to you'd have to know you were coming up against Peter Parker, and you'd have to go out of your way to try and make it happen. It's a, a fun thematic card in terms of like being competitive, not not at all really. But that doesn't matter really. All, all that matters is it's thematic and fun, like the one where the Guardians all fight with each other. Anyway, that is it for the releases this month. Finally here in the UK, so. <laughs> Craven, Lizard, Carnage, Mysterio, Amazing Spider-Man, Black Cat. Next month is Jean Grey and I've forgotten the name of the, the person in her box. And it wouldn't also be the release of War Machine and Sam Wilson, Captain America, though obviously we've already seen those. And if you haven't seen the unboxing, go back and look. So not as much to look forward to for the next month's releases, but this is going to be a lot to get through to get them on the table. Also, on that note, expect to see the X-Force very soon. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Stop for now.